and let us all that we can to build a better future. So Tulsi Gabbard and RFK Jr. And yes, even Donald Trump have been calling out the FBI. Now, we've seen with the recent Durham report in regards how the FBI was going after Donald Trump, especially with the whole thing of Russiagate that was being promoted by corporate media. I, for one, am glad to see people talk about it, but to think about it. From 2016 up until now, it was considered taboo. It was wrong to do that. But I want to pull up this speech here that Tulsi Gabbard gave, and I also want to give up, uh, pull up this article here about RFK Jr. also calling out the FBI, claiming that the agency tried to destroy Do uh, Donald Trump and undermine democracy. What is that? Oh, no. Am I triggering the vote blue no matter who crowd? Well, first, let's pull up this article from RT. I know. I know. Vote blue no matter who is going to be traumatized, but who cares? So U.S. Democrat presidential candidate RFK Jr. has broken ranks with his party by arguing that the FBI was politicized to take down Donald Trump both before and after he was elected president in 2016, making a mockery of the U.S. political process. This is no partisan skirmish, Kennedy said on Monday in a Twitter post. It is about the political weaponization of the FBI. Destroy a candidate, then a sitting president. It's about a matrix of lies so elaborate as to make a mockery of the democratic ideal of an informed citizenry. You will never hear Joe Biden, and dare I say it, even Marianne Williamson, or Bernie Sanders, or AOC, or Nancy Pelosi, or if she could, uh, you know, make a sentence, Dianne Feinstein, or anyone else in the DNC establishment. No one will ever say that. I do wish him and his campaign all the best, but good luck running in the Democratic primary. But that's a different subject altogether. Kennedy made his comments in response to last week's release of the Durham report, which concluded that the FBI violated its own standards in starting an investigation into allegations that the Trump campaign colluded with Russia to win the 2016 election. Special Prosecutor John Durham's four-year probe found that the agency based its case on unverified allegations. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I stutter there. The agency based its case on unverified allegations. God damn it. I got to speak English. Third time's a charm. The agency based its case on unverified allegations leading to the Russiagate investigation during Trump's presidency and became a funnel of disinformation for Democrat candidate Hillary Clinton's campaign. CNN. Oh, no. CNN and other media outlets. Uh, touted the Trump-Russia allegations for years, downplayed the Durham report, calling the damning findings about the FBI a whole big nothing. A zero accountability for corporate media. Kenny said the media's role in the attacks on Trump was maybe most troubling of all. He added the Durham report reveals the abject complicity of mainstream press, which is yet to admit they were taken in by the big lie, propagated it, and now continues to permit those lies to stand as truth. Let's have democracy in the chat. Type one for Kit. I trust corporate media. They would never lie to me. Uh, I, I, I want to live in my own reality. Stop making me think for myself. A type two is like, hell no, I don't trust corporate media. They've been lying to us for years. So I want to pull up this video here, and I want to give a huge shout out to Constituent. 808 constituent from the great state of Hawaii. So there you go. I want to pull up this video here. It's of Tulsi Gabbard even calling out the F a B I. So let's get ready to play it. But some of the tools that they're using that this elitist cabal is using is weaponizing our federal agencies and law enforcement to go after their political opponents. The Durham report that was just released exposed this in broad daylight how the Russia collusion was a manufactured hoax and the FBI was weaponized to use that to undermine Donald Trump's candidacy and presidency. We saw how the corporate media, they are more than willing to parrot the talking points that they are given to support this narrative. We are seeing more and more as evidence comes out how those 
51 former senior intelligence officials worked very closely with the media, worked closely with employees of the CIA to stop voters from seeing the information on Hunter Biden's laptop in the weeks leading up to that election. Why? Why did they go through all of this effort to do that? Because they knew that if we saw the truth, we might make a different decision. The ironic hypocrisy in all of this is they did it in the name of protecting us, we the people, from being exposed to misinformation and disinformation. But in doing so, they were spreading disinformation to try to manipulate us and to steal our democracy. You won't hear anybody in the two-party system, yes, even in the Republican establishment, say anything that clear to people. No one in the Democratic Party will say that. No one in corporate media will utter those words. And the thing is, let's look at that Durham report. So many people in independent media have gone through it, and it reveals that the FBI did not, did not, did not, did not do its job. Sorry for the repeats, but I mean, come on. It's a fact. This isn't open for a debate or interpretation or somehow twist and turn and say, well, this is here and this is no, no, no. Russiagate was one big lie. Hey, BBC Verify, are you going to look into that? Oh, I hope so. Now, unfortunately, they are also working hand in glove with many of the big tech monopolies who have no problem following explicit or implicit orders coming from the White House or these law enforcement agencies to silence political opposition, to cancel accounts and manipulate search engine results to influence what information we as voters are exposed to. So these, these major tools and weapons that they are using against us are actually what is undermining our democracy. The Biden administration's move towards implementing a central bank digital currency is their latest effort towards exerting control and taking away our freedom. No matter how many flowery words they use to deny that there is ill intent or that they will invade our privacy or try to control how we spend our money, no matter how many times they say, hey, this is for your own good. How many times have we heard that before? Don't worry. Trust the system. Stop asking questions. Why are you asking questions? Prepare to be canceled. I mean, folks, not once, but eight times, hard lens media has been hit by YouTube for covering stories that corporate media talks about. One of those strikes was when we were talking about how CNN was smearing Joe Rogan. Do you want to know what YouTube said to us? And we won because of all of you lovely people. You helped us out. Get out of that censorship trap. YouTube said that we were giving out fake YouTube. You said that. You said that. Giving out fake information about the pandemic. When we were talking about CNN smearing Joe Rogan. Medical information. CNN smearing Joe Rogan. Two different things all together. I'll just throw it out there. Too many, and it's usually followed by something really bad. <laughs> They're telling us this is for your own good. This is to make your life easier. This is going to make things more convenient for you. But ultimately, we know this is about their insatiable desire and mission for total control. They want to be able to surveil every aspect of our lives, to be able to, to take note of every purchase that we make, small or large. And in doing so, by having this power, they say they would never use it, but they would have the power to be able to control what we buy, how much of it, what we're not allowed to buy, or in ultimately freezing our accounts. The fact that we are so limited already in, in our ability to use cash is evidence of where this path leads. The fact now, I want to stop here for a second because I want to pull up another video here. Something that should capture all of your attention. Because it's one thing for us to hear RFK Jr. and Tulsi Gabbard talk about the uh, the weaponization of 
our federal agencies towards the American people and going after political opponents. But it's also important to, uh, again, be reminded of what we saw with Donald Trump when he came out in that CNN town hall. How he came out swinging and uh, uh, ready uh, to fight. Here, let's go check it out. It's 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 a wonderful gem, and and I love it because I think it's great. President Trump, thank you for your time thank here you. tonight. We got a, a great crowd here in New Hampshire. A lot of voters uh, with a lot of questions about what your 2024 term would look like. What another Trump term would look like. We'll get to the voters shortly, but your poll show that you are dominating the Republican race right now, but you are also under active federal investigation for trying to overturn the 2020 election results. Your first term ended with a deadly riot at the Capitol, and you still have not publicly acknowledged the 2020 election results. Why should Americans put you back in the White House? Because uh, we did fantastically. We got 12 million more votes than we had in, uh, as you know, in 2016. Uh, I actually say we did far better in that election. Got the most uh, that anybody's ever gotten as a sitting president of the United States. Uh, I think that uh, when you look at that result and when you look at what happened during that election, uh, unless you're a very stupid person, you see what happens. A lot of the people, <laughs> a lot of the people in this audience and probably maybe a couple that don't, but most people uh, understand what happened. That was a rigged election and it's a shame that we had to go through it. It's very bad for our country all over the world. They looked at it. And uh, they saw exactly what everyone else saw. You look, even if you just look recently, with the 51 intelligence agents, that made a 16-point difference. Uh, if you look at the but FBI. President now, again, he was being investigated by the FBI under, again, their own failure. I mean, the Durham report just totally shines a light on how much of an epic failure the FBI truly are. If you look at the FBI and uh, Twitter, uh, they call it Twitter files, made a big difference. If you look at Mr. President, the vote, back to what you and, and again, with Twitter files, it revealed how government agencies, including the FBI, went to both Facebook and Twitter, Twitter being under uh, the previous administration before Elon Musk uh, bought it. They were doing everything they could to suppress anything or any story or link about the Hunter Biden laptop story. You couldn't share that story on Twitter or Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg admitted it in a Joe Rogan interview. And thanks to Matt Taibbi and a whole bunch of other heroic journalists, shared the Twitter files with the American people to reveal what was being suppressed. Turns out our government and the government agencies were doing everything they can to dictate and control the narrative. You just said there, though, it, it was not a rigged election. It was not a stolen election. You and your supporters lost more than 60 court cases on the election. It's been nearly two and a half years. Can you publicly acknowledge that you did lose the 2020 election? Let me, let me just go on. If you look at True the Vote, they found millions of votes on camera, on government cameras, where uh, they were stuffing ballot boxes. So with all of that, I think it's a shame that what happened, I think it's a very sad thing for our country. I think it's a very sad thing, frankly, for the world, because if you look at what's gone to our country, our country has gone to hell. Our borders are bad. Our military has been bad. You look at the taxes, you look at inflation, what's happened to inflation. It's just destroying our country. I also want to pull up another video to share with all of you. And uh, I'll, I just want you all to understand that, you know, there's still so much talk, still so much talk about January 6th, what it did. And uh, who really instigated it? I want to pull this video up where Trump came in with the receipts, totally breaking the corporate media narrative. And yes, even the FBI narrative. Back to what happened on that day. He you said did you not weren't. Say that. You, he has testified that. Mr. He did President. not say that. But you said you weren't very involved that day. You did tell your supporters to come to Washington. You tweeted about it, about sure, that speech that happened on the rally. Am I so allowed when to they, say that? When they went to the Capitol, and they were breaking into the Capitol, smashing windows, injuring police officers. Why did you? Why did it take you three hours to tell them to go home? I don't believe it did. Oh, let me pull it out. I have to pull it out. <laughs> so, so if you look at on January fifth, the day before, I All said, right. "Please support our Capitol." We're, 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 we're gonna we're gonna play that again one more time. 
Oh, let me pull it out. I have to pull it out. <laughs> he had to pull it out. So, so if you look at on January 5th, the day before, I said, please support our Capitol Police and law enforcement. They are truly on the side of our country. Stay peaceful. Stay peaceful. This was the day before, and this was in the form of Twitter. Now use truth, truth social. I think it's far superior, okay? I hope everybody's like <laughs> I hope everybody's on truth. Uh, if you look January 6th, this is at two, before 2.30, I am asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful. This is right after, as it was happening. But what happened is they took it down. I don't know why. I think they took it down because it was so good. They didn't like it being up there. <laughs> I am asking, this is, and we didn't know until I got it back because now I have 90 million people waiting for me to go back, but I'm on truth and I'm staying on truth. Listen, I am asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful. No violation. It's, we want no violation. We want no violence. Remember, we are the party of law and order. Respect the law and our great men and women in blue. Thank you. That was at 2.30. That was very early. Mr. President, I looked at the same timeline that you did. Once no, I know, it was but you clear, didn't report that. You know why? Because it was we taken down. We did report down. it. I, I was reporting that It was that taken thing. down and it wasn't. But when it was clear. And so what can be taken away from this? Folks, our institutions that we have here in this country do not have our best interests at heart. You know, and it's surprising and refreshing to see prominent people, but also average citizens really question our institutions, our agencies, our corporate media, and what is being dictated towards us. The Durham report revealed the great lie. Russiagate was a conspiracy theory and fake news. BBC Verify will probably never, ever look into it. But I think it's a, a very, very revealing. And now we are seeing this overall willingness to call out the establishment for its lies. And the thing is, I've said on the show numerous times, you could tell, you could tell a well-constructed lie. But all lies have one thing in common. It's that their foundation will always break. The foundation is terrible. The support beams will break. The load-bearing walls won't hold. Nothing is designed properly in a house that is built upon lies. It will break. Corporate media has, has been promoting lies. The Democratic Party and Republican Party love to promote lies. The people who control the DNC and RNC also control our media. And they've been lying to us for years. So shout out to Tulsi Gabbard, RFK Jr., and yes, even Donald Trump, but also to every single free-thinking citizen who's now looking at the system for what it is. It is based upon lies, and all of us deserve and must have the truth.